Well, Nigeria's petroleum industry regulator, the Department of Petroleum Resources, is getting ready for the final bid round for marginal oil fields, and that's causing a lot of excitement in the oil and gas industry. As at the last day of last year, the DPRO disclosed that 161 companies had been shortlisted for the next stage of the process. And this is where the sticking point begins. Key operators in the sector want to know how many of these companies are from the Niger Delta region, which is being regarded as a goose that lays the golden egg. How transparent will this be process be? And how much money does Nigeria stand to make from it? Well, for answers to these and more, we have now turned to Saki Awalu. He's the director at the Department of the Petroleum Resources, the industry regulator. They will also talk about the National Oil and Gas Excellence Center to be established by the Department of Petroleum Resources. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Walu. Thank you for joining us. Well, I think I just were more or less already uh, asked the uh, main questions. Uh, can we start with the marginal oil fields? The licenses were revoked in April 2020. Uh, the bid rounds started in uh, June. Uh, this is uh, February 2021. Where are we with those uh, 56, 57 uh, marginal fields? And what is the guarantee that this time around, the concern about merit, capacity, competence will be addressed? And even more importantly, the interest of the uh, Niger Delta communities who insist that those marginal fields to be uh, prioritized with regard to the uh, host community's rights? Uh, well, this is a, a very good uh, a question. The marginal field, when we started, we review the first and, and learn from experience. You know, we had 24 marginal field awarded in 2003. Unfortunately, only 13 out of the 24 seems to be... Uh, producing. So the 11 non-producing we were revoked uh, just to guarantee the revenue for the nation. And we did really include those 11 that were revoked. We, we, we get the, the ones that we know they are uh, florific. That's about 57 of it. And we had a very good uh, uh, interest on it because those 57 we had over 630 applicants, which we pre-qualified about 500, and about 370 companies applied for 477 applications. This uh, uh, confirmed interest in, in the assets. And the criteria was very open, that a company exclusively marginal fee is for Nigerian companies. And uh, one of the key criteria for pre-qualifying any company you must have uh, an impeccable uh, evidence that you, Im you include the people of the community, you have a spread of Nigerian uh, uh, outlook of the company, you have strong financial base. And we quite did a lot of due diligence on all the companies that applied. We contacted uh, uh, relevant government agencies like uh, Financial Intelligence Unit, uh, Department of State, uh, federal revenue to really help us to qualify and validate all the information supplied by the applicants. And we put it on a portal that is up and running, which every applicant can really go inside, seek for information with regards to the application, because we provide robust guidelines in which people will have a transparent information on all the companies. Above all, we at the department since we are business enablers and opportunity providers, provided competent person reports, field-specific reports, and accessibility for data prime. Despite COVID, we have a virtual data room that you can enter and see and make an offer so that the field will be developed. Uh, most importantly, we emphasize on community involvement because if you don't have hosts, you cannot really operate. We guarantee freedom for operation as the communities are fully involved in each and every applicant. So that is what gives us confidence. And where we are now, out of 100 and, uh, 300 uh, companies, uh, above 300 companies, 
the 161 shortlisted companies, we are hoping to uh, uh, give them account because this is the first time in this nation whereby we seek approval uh, to allow the acquisition cost to be paid in Naira, which really simplify it for Nigerian companies. So you can pay your signature bonus either in dollars or in Naira. That is a very, very big achievement, which a lot of companies are, are now uh, happier because we know uh, communities are involved and uh, Nigerian Naira need to be strengthened. We don't want to put uh, pressure on it much. So immediately after the payment of signature bonus and compliance with the farm out agreement, farm out demarcation area, then we issue the award and we bring the companies together in which they can now arrange to re-enter the fields. We hope to finish the entire program before Q1, ending Q1 this year. And going forward, we give about 90 days in which the OML holders will have discussion because no two fields are same, so that we allow this asset to be developed. And we believe it will increase uh, the reserve of this country as well as providing a lot of stimulant to the economy. So that's, that's the summary of the marginal field. Very exciting developments. But you would recall that the last bid round almost two decades ago was fraught with litigations and some challenges that hampered the development of those field in you know, successfully producing um, for the nation. Are we not about to make the same mistakes regarding those 11 licenses that were revoked and are now being added to the bid basket? Uh, there are some arguments around the risk of including them as um, there are injunctions against some of those fields. Where are we concerning those legal arguments? And do you think we're making the same mistake by adding them? Uh, okay, first, the 11 marginal fields that were revoked were not among the 57. So completely, this particular bid round does not include the 11 revoked marginal assets. And those 11 marginal assets, the litigation is on whether or not uh, the Protelium Act provided for revocation. Yes, indeed, there is provision for revocation. So this particular marginal field that we are running is out of litigation. We do not have any uh, encumbrances of any of the 57 because the 11 that are in, the, in court, they're even discussing with us to go out of court. Uh, they are seeking to see how government will reconsider them based on the, the work they've done before. Uh, we are assessing the work uh, and seeing the possibility uh, if they come out of court, uh, government will definitely consider and, and see if they can be uh, re-awarded uh, to them or to anybody that is ready to pay good and valuable consideration on those assets. But for this exercise, those 11 assets were out of it. So that is why we are confident and that is uh, the reason why we have this huge interest in the ongoing 57 assets. Right. Uh, I'd like to know, you know, the technology you've put in place as regards this process and how much you've been able to clean, you know, DPR itself as regards the processes and how all of this goes and the technology put in place. And secondly, I want you to talk to me about the National Center of Excellence for Oil and Gas that was launched recently by the Minister of State for Petroleum. You know, uh, DPR um, is a technology-based uh, organization, and uh, generally we perceive to be regulator, but we are not just regulators. We are business enablers and opportunity providers, because no investor will actually come without license from us, and uh, no company will participate in the industry without our license, and there's no activity that will be conducted without our approval. So the technology behind the robust marginal field exercise is internal. We bet not to really include uh, external uh, expertise because we do have capacity. So we use the National Data Repository capacity, which uh, a repository that uh, they're in existing in excess of uh, 15 years. And we leverage on that. We develop a portal internally and we create virtual data room we give access to all the applicants and people that uh, uh, indicate interest. In fact, uh, this gives rise to see how we can really get 
uh, the aspiration of the nation. I remember if I come to the uh, National Oil and Gas Excellence right, Center. Right, uh, please, please hold your thoughts, sir. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back to you. Welcome back to the morning show. Here on the Arise News Channel, still with us is Saruke Awalo, Director at the Department of Petroleum Resources. Uh, Mr. Awalo, if you could just uh, conclude your thoughts. Uh, before we went on that break, uh, please go ahead before we ask the next question. I, I, yes, I, 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 I was trying to shed more light on NOGEC. I think that is the Nigerian Oil and Gas Excellence Center. Yes. The center was inspired at the highest level of, of government. Uh, remember, the president in his... Uh, uh, First year, uh, 2020, first January speech, he made mention that Nigeria is ready for business and uh, he called for diversification of the sector. And he also called upon to see how we can really uh, get, this, get the, the economy running and, and diversify the economy with, with, with oil and gas. So the Minister of State. Uh, also take it up and create uh, ministerial priorities and say, how can we really get this inspiration of president to life? So DPR went to drawing board and uh, we look at it. We now get three things. For oil and gas business to be sustained, there has to be safety, there has to be cost efficiency, there has to be value. So the National Oil and Gas Excellence Center was born on these uh, three fronts. That is safety, value creation and cost efficiency. And it is all about to diversify the, the, the industry in a way that will develop the, the economy, get the sector to really contribute to a double-digit GDP, and create more transparent and more sustainable industry. So uh, the Nigerian Oil and Gas Excellence Center was reborn and... Uh, recently commissioned by Mr. President. All right, so we're talking about technology, you know, the technology that, uh, that the department has put in place as regards, you know, the processing and how the, pro the department has been cleaned up with all this technology as regards to this bidding processing before you went to talking about the National uh, Center of Excellence. So can you just talk about those technologies you were talking about? Oh, okay. Actually, we, for the, for the bidding process, we use a lot of uh, IT, the infrastructure we do have. If you remember, I mentioned the National Data Repository. Um, we try as much as possible to be as remote as possible and have a, a lot of access to information. Because when you want to bid for any asset, all you need to decide is data. So we make data available through creation of virtual data room are having an access and interface that any interested bidder can really come virtually, enter the uh, virtual data room, access the data, fry the data, download the data, and see and make its own decision on whether or not it's interested in that particular asset. So we are proud to say that all the, the softwares that we use mostly are modified internally by DPR uh, staff, uh, that is to really, really limit uh, the leakages and exposure because it's a competition. So we use a lot of IT infrastructure. We use a lot of artificial intelligence in terms of uh, data prying. And we use a lot of uh, uh, interface, IT interface between the applicants as well as DPR. And we work round the clock uh, uh, to make sure that every access is you have access 24 7 because you can access the data from anywhere and the time constraint is no longer any impediment that is what we use in the uh, uh, marginal field bid process the portal is still active every day uh, the portal update itself with where we are what we are where we are going how, where we are coming from so that applicants are comfortable that they are following the process more or less on real-time basis. So well, that is for the marginal field. Yes. Quickly, I would like to take you back again to the uh, marginal 
uh, oil fees okay. uh, bid rounds. Uh, how much is the Department of Petroleum Resources uh, hoping to make from the signature bonuses and the payment for the uh, oil fields? Two billion, three billion, how much? And then secondly, now this is, we're told that this is not, to be, not likely to be or will not be uh, a discretionary bid round. That's why there's so much emphasis on, uh, you know, competence, capacity, and all of that. Now, I recall that last year, uh, I think it was Africa Oil and Gas Report that demanded that there should be a publication of the, uh, the shortlisted companies. You said 161, about 600, um, you know, applicants, which was quite high. Uh, is the DPR going to provide us with a list of the companies that have been shortlisted and information so that these complaints about opaqueness uh, can show us that the process is actually open and transparent? Those two questions. Okay. okay. Question number one, uh, with how much are we expected to, to make? Um, yes, in the application, you can see that the application fee and processing fee were five million per, per, per field. We have 477 applications. And the cost of data prying and data leasing is an uh, average between uh, 65000 to $115,000. And we have about uh, 477 applications. So for that, if you, you can get that, that is what already been made out of the process. Then for the signature bonus, you know, this is a competition. There are outliers that they will put a crazy uh, amount, and there are, whether it is high or low. So what we did internally is to look at the CPE report, that is competent person report, and objectively estimate the average signature bonus on that field. After all, the good and valuable consideration for every asset is being computed by DPR. So we use that as estimate to guide us on the average signature bonus that we expect, which some fields are, are, are high, some fields are low. So that is what we, what we put together. And, uh, you know, we estimate to have uh, not less than 500 million, which uh, is very, very, very on the, uh, on the uh, you know, conservative side. That is that. 500 then million naira? 500 of, million naira? Uh, no, 500 million dollars. Oh, okay. 500 million dollars. Okay. Yes. So, so for the publication, when we started the process, the list of applicants, we did not publish the list of applicants. We did not. And when we free qualified the companies, we did not publish the name of free qualified companies. And when the companies that applied and went through our due diligence, we did not publish those companies also that passed our due diligence to NFIU, DSS, EFCC. So now that we shortlisted, we should not really publish the name of those because it's not all the 161 that may be successful in complying or, or trying to meet up with, uh, with the uh, uh, requirements in the next stage. So it is actually premature to say that you publish name of companies that they are yet to get any award. So when we finish the process, obviously people will get to know who really win. After all, we are yet to get winners. And in the process, all through we are consistent as per our publication that only people that are interested in the process, they will be con contacted, and that's what we are doing. So we want to be consistent in that, and the people that are interested in the process, they are already <coughs> being contacted. When we finish with the process, it will be definitely being open, and we will publish those people that are successful finally, and they have their award. And I think that is even better for the nation and better for the competition. Because we are avoiding any, uh, we, we call it third party interference, since government really believe in, in us and uh, we, we, we believe the investors are having confidence through the process. So right. that is why we, uh, we, we follow our process for not publishing the names of people that were shortlisted, because not all of them may be successful 
in the long run. But Mr. Awalu, uh, what are the guarantees that we have that uh, uh, there will be no application of discretion in the uh, you know, assignment of these uh, uh, marginal fields? Uh, and there have been complaints that in DPR, in the Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources, that there are checkpoints, almost uh, analogous to police checkpoints, even for people to be able to get letters and uh, notifying them about the status of the process. Well, I, actually, um, I am not aware about, about any checkpoints. And you know, it is just like exam. Uh, always people complain when they write exam, they fail. And the process is open. And we have a system whereby it records every company activity in the portal. And this portal is open. So if you apply, whatever you put there is, is, is recorded. And the marking scheme for what you are supposed to submit, whether technical, financial, economic, and field development strategy is there. In fact, that is what limits the discretion. There cannot be discretion in the process because if you discreetly award, then what is the basis? Since no two fields are similar. Remember, there is farm out agreement. There is a, a, a farm out area demarcation. There is negotiation, commercial negotiation with the OML holders. So by the time you say you are going to do discretion without the basic information that is required in the process, that is not possible. So that is our confidence that the discretion is, 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 is very, very uh, impractical. And again, people that do not have notification whether they are qualified to apply or they were not shortlisted, Obviously, you don't expect them to keep quiet. They will rather feel that they have adequate submission that qualifies them. But not every one of the applicants should have. So we took the best. There are fields that have five applicants. There are fields that have 50 applicants. So you can see you can't have 50 applicants in one field and you cannot take the best five. You cannot have a field with 20 applicants. You cannot take the best poll. So if you check how do we even arrive at the 161, objectively we look at fields with respect to the uh, number of applicants to the field, and we select the best. And we put together out of 57, you have five applicants, we take the best one. Ten applicants, we take two. Fifteen, we take three. Twenty, we take four, and we get all this thing together, and that's when we short. That is how we short. Let's say we we'll come up with the number, and we know this number. Not all of them, they may be able to really uh, complete the process, and that the number will shrink again. So the process is: we started with six hundred plus, we now get down to five hundred plus, we now get down to three hundred plus. Now we get down to one sixty one. We don't know the number we will get down to. So the process is on. And we are optimistic that because of the process we put in place, a lot of people that feel they must have, if they are not successful to be shortlisted, they must really say uh, whatever that is in their mind. Well, okay. Well, at this point, I wanted uh, Adesua to still ask you a question, but we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Awalu, for shedding light on the uh, marginal oil fish uh, bid uh, process. Thank you very much. And of course, the uh, National Center for Excellence uh, that your office is working on. Thank you very much for joining us.